Oh my God, it's the end of ham radio. I can't believe it. I'm all washed up. All that studying, all those exams for nothing. Welcome into the K0LWC Ham Shack. I honestly never thought I'd be making this video. The ARRL has announced a worldwide digital contest. Like, what? Let me tell you why I'm so surprised. My brain is blown because there is a very strong contingent within the ham radio world, especially in the contesting realm, that are very much anti-FT8, FT4 uh, digital. That they're just very much against it. In fact, there are many contests today where you'll see that you just cannot use that mode. It's just not an operated mode that you can use. Uh, and that's very common. So I'm just surprised, but not surprised, that the ARRL has done this because this is going to piss some people off, but you know what? I like it because I think it's a good move by the ARRL. Here is what you need to know. The ARRL Worldwide Digital Contest will take place this year for the first time, June 4th and June 5th, and run for 30 total hours across those two days. Every subsequent year, starting in 2023, this contest will always take place the first full weekend in June. And I gotta say, boy, June is really shaping up to be a hell of a contest weekend for the ARRL. We start the month with digital contests and we end with field day. Sounds like a pretty good month to me. This digital contest will uh, include any non-RTTY mode that allows for the exchange of the four digit grid square identifier. You can use 160 meter through six meter. So primarily HF with six meter VHF included. And that's gonna be right near that peak of the sporadic ECs, which is gonna make that six meter even more fun. But there are some interesting categories and rules that you need to know. Uh, one of them is there's a couple interesting classes. One of them is the all enclosed antenna class, meaning I think for people that have attic dipoles for the HOA restricted, this class is just for you. You have a category all to yourself to compete in. And I think that was a very smart move because HOAs are proliferating. So giving a nice level playing field for folks that are really restricted in the antenna side of things is a great, great move. The other category there is an eight hour sprint. So if you just wanna like focus on an eight hour sprint when you know propagation works really well for you, your antenna, there is this eight hour category you can use as well. Now, there's also some interesting rules around operation time. If you're a single op, just yourself, you can only operate for 24 of the 30 hours. But if you're a multi-op station, you can run for the full 30. And how they actually calculate the points is also pretty interesting. Now you can operate one station, one time, per band. So you can pick up the same station on multiple bands uh, and each contact is worth one point per band. But the distance between you and that station also factors in to your total score. Uh, let's say you have a contact with somebody who is 1,240 miles away. Uh, that's going to count for first one point for the contact. 1,240 miles, you get one point for every 310 miles of distance. So in a 1,240 mile contact, that would be a five point contact. One point for the contact, four points for the mileage. So really you wanna focus on how many more long distance contacts you can make. So little hint, little tip, if you have an antenna outside, you're gonna to wanna to try to get it up as high as you possibly can for this contest because you're really gonna to wanna to work that DX station for maximum points. Can you believe that we're here? I mean, again, I think it's incredibly smart by the ARRL to do this. As I mentioned earlier, it's gonna piss people off, but that's fine. You know what? The FT8 movement, uh, in fact, is popularity as a mode. You can't deny it. Just look at everything in club log. It is one of the most, if not the most popular mode consistently month to month, barring other contests. I think this is a great move by the ARRL. You can obviously tell who it's aimed at. Um, it's for operators who are antenna restricted, uh, but also I said really into and really love FT8 and FT4. Now, the ARRL also does have a suggested band plan to operate during the contest. It's not on normal FT8 and FT4 frequencies, and I'll put that down in the description below. But what do you think? Is this a good move by the ARRL? Or is this, God forbid, killing ham radio like everything else out there? Again, personally for me, I love to see it. So I'll catch you again next time.